Hello, everyone. I'm talking to our friend Hulen from the Basque Country, which is affiliated with Spain in some way. He maybe can explain better than me. Hulen was a, a exchange student that stayed with us a few years ago, and then the, the year after that, I think his family, his whole family came over and visited us. And we haven't had a chance to reciprocate by going back to the Basque Country to visit him. And now, under these circumstances, of course, it's getting very difficult. But I thought it'd be interesting to talk to Hulan about um, what's going on in the Basque Country is for this oral history project that we uh, we're, we are embarked on. So, first of all, Hulan, uh, what kind of news can you report from the from the Basque Country in in general? Um, how are things going there? Hello, John. Uh, first of all, thank you for counting on me. And yeah, basically. That, that's it, thank you. Um, about the about situation, the situation right now, right here, now here. Um, we are in the de-escalation uh, process. It means that uh, the lockdown is little by little uh, uh, coming to an over, you know, it's getting over. We're getting out little by little. So the government has made like a, a plan to, to overcome the lockdown and we are in phase one there are like phases from zero to three, and then we are in phase one. So we can say that we're not in a lockdown like a hundred percent. Can you go, can you go out and uh, without a permission slip now, or what, what yeah. are the circumstances if you want to go out of the house? The thing is that in phase zero, we were able to, to go only for a walk or uh, to do a sport, but individually, and if you wanted to go to, for a walk, you, you had to go with the people you live with. And now in this situation, in phase one, uh, we are allowed to go to you know, uh, outdoor, outdoor bars and everything, and you can meet a uh, maximum uh, 10 people. When you go to a bar, do you have to sit six feet away from somebody or how do they work that? Yeah, you have to keep like a distance. It's more or less two meters. I don't know in feet, uh, <laughs> how is it in feet, but it has to be two, two meters. So you have to worry about it a little bit, but otherwise it's pretty much normal. And then the, the thing is that you can go to, to a bar, to an outdoor bar, but then you're not able to go to um, a, you know, for a walk with 10 people, which people like do, they, they do, but you're not allowed to. Well, I mean, if, are, are, are the bars mainly opening up outside where you're sitting outside with the wind blowing? the droplets yeah. away and all that sort of thing <laughs> yeah they are open in general they have like a more strict uh, schedule but they are open i i think till 11 p.m or something and they have like very strict rules you you can't go uh, inside to order your drinks and everything but uh, otherwise you can just you can stay uh, outside and it's pretty pretty good at the moment what 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 season are you in in Spain? Is this spring like here or what? No, it's a uh, now it's a um, uh, spring. Yeah, yeah, spring. We're getting to summer. Yeah. So, what what would you say the average temperature is right now? I know in Celsius. In Celsius, it can be it varies from twenty five degrees, which is uh, Celsius to 15. S sometimes it, it can get quite cold, like m maybe not cold, but uh, quite cool, you know. Is, is your town near the mountains and in uh, the Basque yeah. country? Yeah. yeah, it's a very mountainous area. So we have both both sea and mountain as well. So yeah, the, the, I would say that the climate is quite, uh, quite change, changing, like you can in, in, in winter, it's very cold or quite cold, I would say, uh, around zero uh, degrees Celsius. And in summer, it gets quite, quite um, hot as well, like uh, quite warm, like uh, 40 degrees uh, Celsius. How far are you from, you, you live in Onate, right? Is that, yeah, pronouncing yeah. It? Is that correct pronunciation? It's, it's Onate, Onate or Onate in, in Spanish. Onate. How are you? So, how far are you from the major Spanish cities like Barcelona and Barcelona? Um, I would say like it's there. There's like a six hours drive from Barcelona, maybe a little bit more, from six to eight, something like that. And from Madrid is like 
four four hours drive. And what about the largest city in the Basque country, which would be the largest one is Bilbao, Bilbao, Bilbao. where the Guggenheim is and everything, and San Sebastian as well is quite well known for for the film festival and everything. And how far are you from Bilbao? Bilbao is like uh, 60 ki kilometers away, like uh, an hour drive. And wow. San Sebastian is like the same, like one, one hour drive. Huh. Okay, so. so yeah. It's the uh, north of uh, Spain. Do you, the go country, Bilbao, yeah. do you go to Bilbao often? Yeah, I used to study there. So yeah, it's uh, quite an important, important city for us. What were you studying? I was studying uh, industrial engineering. And I'm still I'm still uh, studying uh, industrial engineering. I'm about to finish. This is the seventh uh, year. I should it should have taken six years, but I'm in the seventh year because I lost one year. I, it took uh, like one one year more in the degree. So I'm in the second year of the masters, and I only need the internships and the and the project to to finish everything. What would your job prospects be? Because we've heard a, heard a lot about youth unemployment in Spain in general. Yeah, in general, I would say that in, in some sectors, the unemployment, uh, youth unemploy unemployment would be a, a quite a big problem, quite a big deal. But in my case, like in engineering, uh, there's a quite, quite a good uh, employment rate. So I was uh, about to start in internships in an enterprise, in a company, but because of this uh, situation, as you know, the, the COVID situation, the coronavirus, everything um, got delayed. So now I'm waiting for, for the company and for the university to, uh, for some news, you know, and, and go for the internships. Right. With, uh, do internships, internships pay? Or they pay yeah, any yeah. salary or they do? It's, it varies uh, according to, Depending on the company, it can be more or uh, less, but in general, they are paid. It's less than a normal salary here, but they pay. More or less, I would say the minimum wage or the minimum salary. Maybe a little bit less, but... We would call that apprenticeship here, I guess. Not Because we, we, we tend to think of interns as being unpaid here, <laughs> which might be a, a U.S. phenomenon, I don't know. Yeah, it could be here as well. Eh? In some cases, there are people that uh, are, are not paid, but in general, you get some some money. Right. Um, is Mondragon active in the Basque country? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact, it's very close from my hometown where I live. It's like only 10, 10 kilometers away from where I live. So it takes a big, big part here in the in the companies and everything. And uh, many many people work for that uh, group. It's like a big big cluster of uh, enterprises companies, and many people from here work uh, for that uh, company, big company. And what what do people what do people think about Mondragon? I mean, they have a sort of a good reputation internationally as a cooperative. Yeah, is it, yeah. That what the local sentiment is too. The, yeah, the locals as well, they, they have a very good reputation because as I told you, like many, many people uh, work for them here and it's a very strong uh, industrial area here. So it's, the reputation is very good. I mean, there's some issues uh, as everything, you know, uh, with the big companies, but in general, they are very well known and you know like they have a very good so, people, so so in other words people would try to get jobs there if they can is that is one of the places that people look to yeah yeah that's it yeah yeah that's it especially i i did i'm, I'm not gonna do the internships in one one of these uh, companies but there are many people around me like my friends that are working for those companies uh-huh and yeah. they have their different departments they make different things as i understand yeah. so yeah. Because there are a lot of companies. I don't know how much they are, but it's like a big group of uh, companies. So it takes, uh, you know, a vast uh, uh, sector of industries, and it's it's big. Do you know what they've done in in in, in terms of the uh, downturn in business? Has generally affected people. Have they laid off or have they kept? You mean in this situation? Yeah. 
what have, what has Mondragon done in in terms of the ac economic situation? Are they well, shortened hours or laid people off or yeah, what? Yeah, I think it's uh, different for for each company because I as I told you there are like many companies inside Mondragon uh, Group. But I know that some some companies uh, they have not um, stopped their uh, activity because they they were declared as essential. And here in Spain, if you are declared as essential, they didn't um, stop the, the activity. And some others they had to because they weren't uh, declared as essential. Imagine that you make um, plastic for food or every, uh, or something related with food, then you have to uh, keep a uh, manufacturing so they didn't stop but some others have they have stopped and they have applied some kind of work uh, regulation that they are saving the money uh, of the salaries of the people of the workers and the, the government pay, pays for it it's called ERTE it's a very well known these days here uh, it's a regulation that social security pays for the for the salaries even if the workers are not uh, working uh -huh. Well, that's 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 good to hear. Um, yeah. How are people getting to work? I mean, do, do uh, most people own cars where where you are, or do they, is there public transportation? Or do they keep yeah. the public transportation going? The transportation is going, but in general, the, there are two possibilities: either the people is going to work in general, or they are working from home. Yeah, I mean, but like. They, they, if you work in a factory, it's kind of hard to work from home. Well, yeah, there, there are some activities that you can do, you can't do from home, but otherwise there are some, uh, for example, the engineers are, or the people who work in offices are working from home with the laptops and everything with, you know, uh, right. and it's been very popular, that kind of uh, working in general, like the, the government workers and almost everybody, the, the ones who can, are, are working from, from home and otherwise they're they are uh, going to, uh, to work imagine to the to the factories but they have to keep the the distances and everything so it's very strict right are your parents working from home yeah well my father he's going to the office that is here in the hometown he, he can go but my mother who works for the government and he, she was she was uh, working from home, but now they are starting to go to the to the you know to work like a, in you know uh, like presentially in an office or whatever. Yeah, yeah. in the office. Yeah. Um, so, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, the, uh, they they have just started doing that thing. It was this week that uh, she went for the first time uh, to work. How how is she feeling about? going back to work i mean is she worried about she's happy because still? she's happy because she says that uh, when when she's at home she works much more hours than than in uh, than in the office oh really yeah yeah <laughs> because uh, everybody has different schedules to work and everything and and she gets like uh, a lot of calls and she might have a call imagine like 7 p.m or and otherwise if if she would be at, at the office she wouldn't have that call, imagine. So she was a little bit fed up. Ah, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, we had a few other things we wanted to talk about. Um, how about your friends? How are they? Uh, how are they dealing with uh, the lockdown? I mean, are, are you able to see them at all? Or are you just doing? Now I'm able. At, at, at first, uh, at the beginning of the lockdown, we weren't able to see each other because we could go out only with uh, with the ones who we lived at home, you know. But now with the thing of the outdoor bars and everything, we can meet up to 10 people uh, in the streets. So, yeah, basically it's good. From this week on, we, we, can, we can meet. So it's a very pleasant uh, <laughs> news. Yeah, did, did did any of them get sick? Did, do you know of? No, in general, I have heard some cases, but in general, it it was quite uh, light and everything. So, you know, it was just uh, like a like a regular flu flu. Because uh, because Spain the the Spain was noted as one of the 
worst countries uh, for uh, yeah, sickness yeah. and death. Yeah, it's been, it's been bad in general, but like mostly the people who had some complications before or the ones who were the older or whatever were the ones who, ha who had problems. Otherwise, if you were young and more or less healthy, you would stay at home, you know, like have like a normal fever, uh, like a normal cough or whatever, and then that's it. But in general, yeah, it's it's been quite tough. In that sense, uh, there there have been a lot of deaths and everything, thing, and it seems that now it's getting better, but it's been tough. Yeah. Um, well, you know, thank, thanks a lot for talking to us, Olan. Is there anything else you want to report on uh, before we stop the recording? No, I think uh, it's pretty much the that, that's the situation. And thank you very much uh, to you as well, John. For counting on me and well, thank thank you for for giving us your impressions of what's going on in the Basque country. You're welcome. <laughs>